Today in my garden, we're gonna be talking about Vajega metal raised garden beds. We need to do a review because it has been officially two years since I got my first bed, one year since I got these five beds, and about six months since I got the other three beds up front. Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? Which means in total, I have nine beds. I have them in the dark green, I have them in the oyster white, and I have them in the dark gray. I have them in the nine in one system. I have the L shapes, I have the circle shape, and I have the rectangular shapes, you know, with the pointier edges. I'm trying to figure out what other information you probably want to know <laughs> before you listen to the rest of this, but I think probably the one thing you really want to know is, would you recommend these Vajega metal raised garden beds? And my short answer would be yes, yes I do. And if you just needed that, so before you buy them, go ahead and click the link right here and go ahead. But if you have more questions, let's let's get into those. Now, one of the questions that I've heard over time from people when they've seen these beds is they want to know, one, do they bulge? Because I'm sure a lot of people have had like metal and they just want to know like, is it going to get that weird warp thing? And that is a valid concern because all metal beds are not equal. It really just depends on what material and what gauge level the metal is. And if you're gonna, I'm gonna say stuff at times, I'm sorry if it gets a little technical. My background is mechanical engineering. My professional career has been working in food manufacturing for the majority of it. And so I have a lot of experience with metal in industrial settings, especially when dealing with food. So that's where a lot of this is gonna come from. So with the gauge of this one, and I honestly do not remember the thickness off the top of my head, with all the 17 inch beds, there's zero bulging no matter the shape, whether it was circle, L shape, the nine in one or the rectangle ones, none of them have shown any amount of bulging. So if that was a worry on your mind, there you go. I think the next question that a lot of people have is, are they gonna get hot? And I have heard people who have metal beds and them getting very, very hot. And this is very surprising um, because some of those people live very, very far <laughs> north. And I cannot imagine what kind of things are causing it. I mean, this must be some really cheap metal. But with these ones, there is actually a um, coat, the coating that they have on it, which is zinc, aluminum, magnesium, actually has some reflective properties. And this is of importance because you may be wondering, well, if this person who lives so far north is getting hot, what if someone lives further south? What would it mean for them? And let me be clear about where I live. I live in Florida. I live in central Florida. I live in a subtropical tropical climate a zone 10 if you're curious and what is probably more unique than most of the country because i'm sure there's places that get hotter is we have a much more intense sun than the majority of the country maybe south texas my puerto ricans you too but other than that everyone else your uv index is just much lower my chicago's my new york's my midwesterners my northeasterners you are peaking out at a uv index of nine uh, our average uv index is nine here in florida and we peak out at about 12 or 13 depending on your exact location so that's just to give you context so here's the question to answer do, do they get hot they get warmer than the ground i actually did a video i guess if you want to watch it <laughs> It's not really about raised garden beds, it's about the impact of heat and structures, but you can watch it, it's right there. And I looked at the temperature difference between raised garden beds in the sun, raised garden beds in the shade versus the soil itself. I also looked at asphalt and other things too in the video. But to just to give you some general data is, are, is the soil in here warmer than the ground? Yes, it is, especially if it's in full sun, it's gonna be about nine degrees warmer. And, and when I took that data, it was actually one of the hottest months of the year. It was only a couple months ago. Um, I don't know if you can tell, it's summer right now, which is why I'm gonna be talking a little fast because there is a thunderstorm right there, which is typical for Florida in the summertime. <laughs> so we did see a nine degree difference between um, soil and direct sunlight versus a raised garden bed. Now, when it came to ones that were in semi-shade, the difference was actually, they were about the same. So in general, yes, they're warmer, but they are not excessively warm. And since we are in the summertime and I have a thunderstorm rolling in, you may wonder, but does that mean you won't be able to grow stuff in the summer? Well, I did. I've got too many peppers in them <laughs> and I have roselle in the front and sweet potatoes. So I grew through the summer and summer in Florida is actually the off season for vegetable gardening. So this might be my last point for a minute. So you can absolutely grow with them. It might just accelerate you moving into warm weather crops a little bit earlier than you think or hot weather crops. And if you're not familiar with hot weather crops and you live in a subtropical climate or in the South, you might want to consider learning about them. That's sweet potatoes, okras and roselle. But I was able to grow just fine. Next question is, were you burned by them? No, actually, if you watch lots of my videos through the summer, I sit right up against and next to these beds in the awful middle of the day. 
And more of what bothers me is the sun. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get this video done. <laughs> and more of what is heating me up is the surrounding temperature and not the bed. But that doesn't mean that the panels don't get hot. I actually have dealt with them being very, very hot because these beds and the first bed that I got, we built in the summertime. It's a terrible idea. Because, not because of the beds, but just doing anything that's hard labor in the summertime in Florida is just not a good idea. So when the panels, when we were putting them together and there's no soil up against them, they do get hot. I would say they do get really hot to the touch and I wouldn't recommend doing it in the middle of summertime. Which is why coatings matter. It is a difference that makes a difference. And actually materials matter. I've had a lot of people also comment, me being in Florida, that they say, <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna try. Um, they say that wood, uh, wood beds would actually be better when it comes to temper controlling. And that might be the case. And if you live in a different area and you're deciding between wood and metal, which I'm guessing that's not the case if you're at the point of this video, this is probably more like you've decided on metal. But if you haven't, something to consider and something I have to deal with is I live in Florida. There are lots of termites. This is an issue people have in Florida. There's no getting around it. And it's not particular even to metal beds. This is something that everyone has to deal with with their houses and any wooden structure. So wood breaks down insanely fast. Floridians, let me know in the comments, right? Am I right here? I'm right here. Oftentimes people are saying that they do pay for wood beds within two years, they're broken down. So metal is an importance. And I did do a video linked right here that you can go and check out where I talk through things you want to look through if you're considering metal beds. What I also liked about this coating is that it is a food grade coating and with my background in manufacturing that's a big deal. You don't want to expose your food just to any chemical. I think this is one of the things where people who are trying to save some money and I don't fault anyone from saving money as they talk about spraying like different things onto their beds but while that might cause the bed not to rust it's not going to necessarily be food grade and if, it, if your goal is with these raised metal garden beds is to grow food, then I would highly recommend you make sure that you have a food grade safe coating, no matter what brand you go with, just because like the whole point of growing your food is so that you can be healthier. Don't ingest carcinogens. You know what I'm saying? Not a good idea. Now, Vajega wasn't actually my first set of raised metal garden beds. I actually did have another brand, which was Best Choice Products. Those beds within six months, rust. By 18 months, totally degraded. One of the other reasons I like Vajega is they're the actual manufacturer and maybe because I have the manufacturing background, having purchasing from someone who actually makes the bed, I like. And, and if you need a little bit more affirmation that Vajegas would be a good purchase, here's some more. I went digging through my comments. Ours for Bees, Veggies for Me's said, I love my Vajegas. I bought them after watching your review. Monica said, I bought five of these beds after seeing your original video, loving them so far. And that video she's talking about, those videos were done about a year apart. So not just me having good experience with them, other people are too. And if you need others you want to read, here are some other comments from people who have bought Vajegas and have commented on my videos, not on their website. Oh my. What? Is this a sunny sky? How did that happen? This is future me. And I wanted to take you through an inspection of the potential rust points. I talked about this in the one year review. And if you're not familiar with metal, that's okay. Here I am to teach you, which so where we typically will find things is where they drilled holes so that, you know, you can put screws and stuff or wherever they cut a panel. And then sometimes if there's been like bending, so we'll look at the rectangular ones where they did the bends, because those are the stress points where typically we are more likely to have failure. And typically because those points if they don't do quality coating, like they make sure that the coating makes it all the way to the edges, they make sure it actually goes inside those holes, that's where we're gonna typically see it. And in order to get rust on a steel bed, the way you get it is because you have moisture, salts, and the steel metal, and that's what makes rust. Yay, fun times for science. So let's go check out some of the points on the oldest bed, which is this one right here, and then we'll go check out the rectangulars and the white ones because they're different shapes. And I don't know, maybe there's a difference. Also, they were all made at different times, so you never know. The first up, we're looking at these, what we'll call insertion points. So this is where they're drilling a hole through the metal before they coat it. So if we're gonna see something, we might see some rust evidence by dripping down over here. We'll check both sides. Uh, the other thing we might see is rust on our fasteners. So like these screws right here, nuts, bolts, so on and so forth. The other place we might find it is here on the edges. So here we are two years in, we don't have any strong evidence that we've got anything going on. So here we are on the other side of the insertion point. So we can see we have a washer, we have a nut, we can see the other end of the bolt and we don't see any evidence of rust here. We don't see any along this edge. So all that looks good. We're gonna dig into the panel area. 
All we see is soil. No evidence of any pitting or rust in here. Oh, my sweet potatoes, they've gone crazy. Okay, here's my, my rectangular one. So you can see there's a bend here. I know I had some questions from people about whether you would see more bulging because of the actual, uh, the bend right here. Cause technically when it comes to where you might see bulging, um, basically a sharp corner like this doesn't do as good of a job maintaining its structural form versus like an arc, like most of the other beds. But because we don't have that much force pushing from the soil, we, we don't typically see bulging in this size bed. And I can, don't know if you can tell, but it's such a mess here, but there's no evidence of bulging here. But we look here, similar, no signs of rust at any of the insertion points, none along the cut line. Oh, here's a good example. So right here, let me see if I can zoom in. I don't know if you guys can see that there is a small scrape in the coating right here. So you can actually see some initial type rust on this one. So there was some quality variation. So you actually have a slight amount there from a pitting that happened there. So that'll be a watch out for long term. But overall, this is looking good. Here are my jalapeno peppers. <laughs> Behind them is insertion points. And none of these, we don't see any signs of rust on the seam or at the insertion point. And when I look on the interior side, oh, let's do it right there. Nope, that's just all soil. And nope, we don't see any on the one-year-old beds. So overall for six months, one year and two years, we are seeing that our insertion points, our cut points, interior and exterior, we're not seeing any significant or major signs of rust and corrosion. So if you're considering buying Vajega and they are in your budget and you like the look, you should go ahead and buy them. So if you want to go ahead and click this link right here, they're constantly running sales. If they aren't running a sale, wait five seconds and they probably will be one. And if you need a discount code, go ahead and use discount code Wild Floridian for 10% off. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.